This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to make a PWC cover, personal watercraft cover. The cover that we're designing is built for a jet ski. However, the instructional video is perfect for anything that has a little bit of a shape to it, whether it be a boat cover, or a jet ski, or a motorcycle, or a grill, an instrument panel on a boat, anything that has shape. If you want it to be rather form-fitting, this is a perfect video to watch. The first step in patterning is to create a frame using the filament strapping tape. For this PWC or jet ski, we're going to go around the gunnel with the filament strapping tape. We'll then be applying a double-sided tape on top of it. Before we do that, we'll be placing a match-up system of dots along the filament tape so that we can determine exactly the size to cut out our pattern material. You can see here that we've taped the handlebars in place so they do not move so that we can create our frame using the filament strapping tape. So here we'll go from the corner of this jet ski all the way to the corner of the back portion of the seat. So this will be a straight line when we create our pattern. We'll do that to the opposite side as well. As you watch this video, you'll notice that we'll be creating five separate panels or fabric blanks. The filament strapping tape is used to create the frame for each one of our patterns. Here we're creating the frame for the side panel and obviously the front panel. You should also take note that we're going from point to point. We're finding common points on the boat that we can create a nice frame structure from. We don't want to just create a bag that fits loosely over this PWC. So we're going to create some points here along the seat that will be used to run our filament strapping tape along. So something that looks pleasing to the eye yet will come in and hug the shape of the object that we're trying to cover. And here we're using a Sharpie marker to create dots on top of that tape. And we'll put a dot back here as well along the back portion of the seat. Then we'll measure from dot to dot. We're going to try to duplicate the same position on the seat that we created to make those three dots. So we're going to take some measurements and mark that down on a piece of paper so that we can duplicate it on the other side of the PWC. Now we also need to measure down from those dots to the gunnel here where we've uh, positioned that uh, filament strapping tape down there as well. So write those measurements down on your piece of paper. What we're doing will make more sense after watching the entire video. Basically, the principles that are covered for this jet ski will basically give you the techniques to cover anything that has a little bit of a shape built into it. Patterning is not two-dimensional. It is three-dimensional. So by creating a frame using the filament strapping tape, you can create a structure around your irregular shape object that will create a cover that will fit rather snugly. As discussed earlier, Sherilyn is placing those dots in the exact right position on the opposite side of the seat, using those measurements that she took earlier. Once she's happy, she'll place a dot with a Sharpie marker on each one of those positions. Now we'll come down from the handlebar and we'll follow those uh, marks that we placed on the seat. So this is where uh, our panels will meet. It's not important to have the strapping tape be totally straight because remember, we're going to be using those dots and drawing straight lines from dot to dot. So you just want to create a pattern here, being sure that the filament strapping tape is on top of each one of those dots that you created with your Sharpie marker. Now we're going to put the dots on top of the uh, filament strapping tape so that we can see them easier when we do our patterning. Now because this filament strapping tape is not on an object and may come up, we're going to tape across it to help hold it in place. Then we're going to put some strapping tape on the back panel back here at the top. This is where the back panel will join with the seat panel. 
We'll be showing you some of this in double time here to speed up the process. We don't want to bore you, <laughs> but we're basically creating that same uh, shape that we have on the opposite side so we can create the top panel. Now you can start to see our process here. Here will be our top panel or our seat panel. And we're going to separate the seat panel with the forward panel by placing filament strapping tape across the handlebars. They're not straight across. They have a little bit of shape built into them. And then we're going to finish off that uh, the remainder of the side piece so that we can create the front panel. We're going to place dots at each one of the points where we'll be connecting straight lines from dot to dot. So here along the mirror, and obviously the handlebars that we showed previously, and along the front of the PWC. Any place there's shape or where we'll need to join a straight line, we'll position a dot. Notice there's a straight line from dot to dot there as well. Here along the mirror again, and also the handlebars. Anywhere along our frame structure where there's a little bit of a curve and it's not perfectly straight, it's not a bad idea to put dots about every five to six inches. That way we can use the dots to connect our straight line, not knowing for sure if it's perfectly straight. Anywhere where we know it's straight, we don't have to worry about it. But here along the front edge, where there's definitely some curve built in, we want to place dots about every five or six inches apart here. That way we can use those to draw our straight line when it comes to the creating the pattern uh, that will be used to cut out the fabric. Now along this edge, it's not a bad idea to do that as well. Probably is a straight line, but uh, we're just playing it safe. And here in the middle of our handlebars, we'll place a single dot there that will connect the two sides of the handlebars with the straight line. Now that our frame structure has been created using the filament strapping tape, we'll be applying the double-sided tape on top of the filament strapping tape. This will provide a great way to attach the Durascrim pattern material, which is a plastic uh, patterning material, on top of the frame structure and hold it in place so that we can create the exact shape that we desire. We'll place the double-sided tape on all of the filament strapping tape. We'll only be creating one side panel. The opposite side is pretty much the exact same shape as the uh, other side, so we'll be flipping that panel when it comes to patterning our material. We'll discuss that more in detail later on in the video. We'll remove the uh, paper transfer tape revealing the glue, and notice the double-sided tape sticks exceptionally well to the filament strapping tape. That's the reason we choose to use that to create our frame structure. We'll be using a Durascrim pattern material that you can purchase from Sailrite. This clear plastic material has a woven weave in it that helps prevent stretching and tearing. Cheryl Lynn is positioning it on this front panel here. This is the forward portion that we need to pattern and she's uh, positioning it so that it works out most of the wrinkles. Take your time here. The more effort you spend in positioning the pattern material on top of the double-sided tape, the better your end result will be. Sometimes two people help with this process. Cheryl Lynn's doing it on her own so it can be done on your own as well. Because this front portion of the PWC has some shape in it, we're going to have to create a few darts to make it more form-fitting. First she's going to position the pattern material on top of it as best as possible. Then if there's excess pattern material, she'll create darts to take out the excess uh, material that will make it more of a shape-fitting cover. If you're not concerned about it being a shape-fitting cover, you obviously do not need to put the darts in position, but darts do make for a better looking cover. Here she's discovered there's approximately an inch of excess fabric here, and so she's creating a dart right along the front edge of the cover. 
there's also a little bit of sloppy material here at the handlebars. So she's also going to create a dart right in the middle of the handlebars. So she's working the excess material out and creating a dart there to make it a little bit more form-fitting. As you can see, the double-sided tape is perfect for holding the pattern material in place. It doesn't move around on you. So here she's created the dart at the top. Now we're going to work back down to that dart along the forward edge, and she's going to determine where that dart will stop. And then she'll place a point right at that position, and she'll also put a circle around it so that she can quickly find that dot. Okay, now she'll work to the forward portion, uh, the extreme outer edge of it, and she'll place a line along the inner fold and the opposite side fold. Okay, and then we're also going to put a dot along that forward edge where the dot has been placed on the filament strapping tape because we're going to cover that dot when we tape the dart down to the pattern material. We're going to use that filament strapping tape and tape the dart down. That'll be discussed a little bit later on in the video. Uh, but it's, it is important to tape or either pin the dart in place. Now let's concentrate on that dart at the handlebars. Again, we're going to find the point where we want the dart to stop, and we're going to put a point or a dot at that position. Okay, we'll use our Sharpie, put a dot, put a circle around it so we can find the dot easily. And then we're going to put a, a line on each side of the fold at the dart. Oh, first we're going to mark that dot again. You can see that dot in the filament strapping tape. Put a line on this side, and then put a line on the opposite side. Then we're going to tape the dart down just as we did previously. Now don't forget to transfer all of the dots onto the pattern material that you created on top of the filament strapping tape. Without those dots, you can't join each dot to dot when it comes to cutting out the pattern material. In some situations, it's not a bad idea to actually put an arrow at each one of those dots because sometimes they can kind of disappear on your pattern material when you take it over to cut each one of the patterns out. And do not forget to label the pattern material. One reason for labeling is to determine what side is what, but it's also important to determine whether the uh, pattern material is facing right side or wrong side. Then simply remove the pattern material from your frame structure. We'll now go ahead and pattern for the side of the PWC, doing the same procedure here as well. We're going to do double time with some of this film here because hopefully you've already gained the concepts of it, but we will show all of the steps. We'll slow it down when it comes to creating a dart in this side panel. We're only going to create one side panel. We'll use that same side panel for the opposite side. We'll be flipping it when we place it on top of our fabric. Both sides of this PWC are very similar. If they were not, you would have to create a side panel for the opposite side as well. We apologize about the background noise, but it is business as usual here at Sailrite. Jeff Frank is plotting sail kits and you hear the vacuum table in the background. Cheryl Lynn is just about finished positioning this material onto the side of the PWC. As you can see, the more time and energy you spin into it, the better it comes out. She's pointed out that we are going to have to have a dart in the middle. You never know for sure how many darts you need, but uh, she's already determined that a dart will be required. She's going to cut some of the excess material away. That makes it a little bit easier to work with our pattern piece. All right, so here in the middle here, you can see there's some excess material. So we're going to put a dart there right underneath the handlebars. We'll show you that next. So Sherilyn's pinching the fabric at this point, And because of the double-sided tape, we can stick the material and hold it in place with that double-sided tape along that filament tape. This is not going to be a straight dart. It's actually going to have a little bit of an arch to it. That's quite acceptable. Whatever makes the pattern material lay the best is the kind of dart that you want to create. If you want to create more than one, you can do that as well. However, each dart adds a little bit of labor to the entire process. Here she's determined that the dart will stop here. She's going to create her dot 
and then put a circle around it to find it quickly. And she's going to walk it down and create her lines on each one of the fold sides of the dart here at the bottom where the gunnel is. And then she's also going to, whoops, a little bit off on that one. She'll fix it. There it is. Now it's fixed. She's also going to create lines along the fold since it is a little bit of an, at an angle. It's not straight up and down. So she's going to tape it first to determine the exact arc of this dart in a few locations. And then she's going to strike lines, basically dash lines, all the way up the dart. Okay, so there it's taped in position. But because it's not a straight line, we need to mark intermediate points along the dart. Okay. So now use the Sharpie and unfold it slightly so you can put a mark there and obviously a mark on the other side and do that along the entire length of this dart. Now on the inside as well again at specific spots doesn't really matter just need to be marked enough that you can actually follow the dart. All right, I think you get the general idea. Here that pattern material is now complete. Now we need to put our dots at each one of the locations that we indicated on the filament strapping tape. So we're transferring those dots to the pattern material. Don't forget to label the pattern material with some legible uh, label. Like here we're marking mirror and up here we'll mark HB for handlebars. That way we know where those points are and we also know if the uh, pattern material is laying right side or wrong side up. We're going to cut some of the excess material away here just to make it more manageable. Then we'll remove the pattern material from our frame structure. To create a pattern for the seat, uh, I'm actually going to help Sherilyn here and uh, we'll start from the back and work our way forward. We're going to create two darts in this uh, pattern material along the top of the seat. So again, as I discussed earlier, having two people can sometimes help to speed up the process of patterning. We're being careful to apply the pattern material on top of the double-sided tape working out as many wrinkles and issues as possible as we work our way up to the handlebars. We've determined that we want our dart to start here so we're going to create a fold and hold that fold in place as we position the pattern material over the handlebars. We're trying to ensure that the dart is even on Sherilyn's side and also my end. Now we'll tape the dart down using that filament tape to hold its position. there's still a little bit of excess material here right at the forward portion of the vinyl seat. You can leave it there or you can create another dart. I think we'll create a second one. We're going to have this walk in here but that's, that's totally acceptable unless you want to totally form fitted. So. Cheryl Lynn and I conferred and we believe that we should place another dart there. The plotter has finally stopped uh, thus the vacuum noise is gone. Again we apologize for that. So we're going to create another dart about four inches away from that uh, previous dart. And this dart will not go all the way to the uh, uh, outside edges of the pattern material. It will actually stop short uh, slightly. 
and that'll just help to create a little bit more of a form-fitting cover. It's not going to be uh, skin tight, but it will be tight enough to uh, create a cover where rainwater will not collect. Now we're going to mark the dart uh, just as we did previously with the other ones. Since this dart is stopping, we're going to create a dot here uh, that's a little bit premature of the edge. And then we'll mark the pattern material as we did previously. We'll do that to this dart and also the dart that is directly underneath it. We'll not show all of this. We'll just show a little portion of creating the, the uh, markings for the larger dart. Now we're going to have to rip up some of this tape so we can get our marker in underneath there. And then we'll reapply the tape. Alright, do that all along its length. We're going to also mark lines down here where uh, the uh, dart will stop along that filament tape. Uh, that just makes it a little bit easier to determine how far the dart should come. Everything we do to mark the pattern material makes it a little bit easier to figure it out when we take it over to our fabric. Now we'll mark our dots at all the locations. And you must not forget that you need to label it. So top handlebar. And now just remove the pattern material as we did previously. The last and final of our four pattern panels will be the uh, back portion. We'll have actually five uh, fabric panels when we're done, but we're, remember we're using that side pattern twice. And we are going to go through this in double time because the procedure is exactly the same. The only area that needs darts is down here along the gunnel in two positions. Everything else is fitting beautiful. After the darts are created, just uh, transfer all the dots. And then obviously label the panel. The next step is to cut out the pattern material by matching up the dots. Typically we use just a yardstick and we don't carry the lines all the way to the dot. In fact, we keep them about a half inch away from the dot so that we always know where that dot is. So we're using a yardstick and we're doing this in double time and carrying it to each one of the dots and leaving the line short of the dot by about a half inch. As you should be able to tell by the shape, this is the front panel. By utilizing the matchup system, the dot to dot system, this front panel is exactly the size that we want the fabric panel to be cut out at, except for seam allowance and sleeve allowance. And you notice that we're leaving the darts taped down in position. And we're also cutting around the dots so the dots stay on the pattern material. That way we have a good reference for our matchup system. So remember, leave the darts in place taped and cut through the darts as they're folded on the material. Once the pattern material is cut out, you can remove the tape from the darts, which will spread out the material, obviously creating more material than it was when it was previously taped up. So do not remove the tape until the pattern material has been cut. Then remove the tape that hold the darts. We'll now concentrate on the side panel, connecting dots to dot. 
Remember, don't go all the way to the dot. Stop about a half inch from each dot. That way you can tell where the dots are. The side panel has one large dart in it, and we're going to show you that after we speed forward through the dot-to-dot uh, -dot connecting process. It's not a bad idea to sometimes place arrows on dots so that you can recognize where the end dots are. Sometimes that can be done when you're patterning actually on your structure, like the PWC. You can place arrows on dots that are at corners. You'll notice that we're also leaving the darts taped in place and connecting dot to dots. You see here at the bottom ledge, this is along the gunnel, there's actually shape in that line structure. It's not totally straight because obviously the gunnel has some curve to it. So that's why it's important to place the dots five or six inches apart where there's shape. Now we'll cut out our pattern material being sure to cut around each of the dots at the corners. We'll leave the darts taped in place and cut right through the darts. After the Duras Grim pattern material has been cut out, we'll remove the tape that holds the darts in place. That will give us more material, spread out the material slightly. You can see the lines that we marked previously while it was on the PWC. We'll now quickly walk through the uh, seat pattern material. Again, we're using the matchup system, connecting dots to dots. Now spread out your pattern material where these darts are kind of uh, causing a little bit of shape build up in the pattern material so that they lay as flat as possible but still leave the darts taped down as we discussed previously and match up your dots. You notice we placed a few more arrows to indicate uh, where each corner dot lay so that we can find it easily on the pattern material. Notice the pattern material is flat here. She's going to have to spread it out when she comes up to the darts here. So now she's laid the pattern material as flat as possible and draws right through that dart. The second dart is a little bit short of the edge of the material. All right. Now simply use scissors and cut the pattern material out along those lines that we created, leaving the darts taped in place until it's cut out. Then remove the tapes that holds the darts. The fourth and final panel is the uh, back uh, panel, and uh, Sherilyn has placed arrows at each one of those points at the corner so she can find them. She's going to tape the bottom section of these darts a little bit because there's a little bit of excess material there just to keep them in place, and then just simply uh, match up the dots. Okay, once we're done with that, we cut it out just as we did previously on all the other panels, and we're ready to move on. The pattern material has been cut out. You'll see four patterns here. We are going to use that side panel to create the opposite side as well, so it'll be used twice. Sherilyn's now uh, marking on the pattern material that she needs to add four inches at the bottom of each one of these panels for the sleeve that the shock cord will run through. And we also have to add a half inch seam allowance around the other edges. So now let's explain that in a little bit more detail. This is the front panel. We'll need to add a half inch seam allowance around the perimeter where the green is indicated and a four inch sleeve allowance where the purple is indicated. The half inch seam allowance is used to join the panels together where the four inch seam allowance is used to uh, allow for the shock cord to run through a sleeve. Find the Duraskrim pattern material for the front panel, lay it so that the writing is upside down, in other words it's facing the fabric and the fabric has the wrong side facing up. So this is the inside of the fabric and we tape the pattern in place. We'll be using the clear acrylic ruler and we're placing the half inch seam allowance and notice how we go 
all the way down into where the four inch sleeve allowance is. See right down here at the bottom we've extended that line past the pattern material at least four inches or more. Again we're using the clear acrylic ruler. This is a phenomenal device and I highly recommend it if you're going to do patterning. Notice that we're placing the ruler a half inch along that edge of the pattern material and you can see right through this ruler so you can get very accurate measurements and it makes the process of patterning and adding seam allowance or hem allowance or sleeve allowance very easy. Take note that we're extending that half inch seam allowance all the way down past where the four inch sleeve will be added. Be sure to do that when patterning your fabric on all of the panels. Now let's concentrate on the four inch sleeve allowance at the bottom of this front panel. Notice we're using the clear acrylic ruler. You'll see that we're drawing lines that are perpendicular to that edge and see how uh, Cheryl Lynn is using that four inch mark on the ruler to draw her line and it, she's lining up the uh, line on the acrylic ruler so that it is even with the bottom edge of the pattern material. Notice that she's using the dot from the matchup system to uh, indicate where the line should stop. Then she'll move the acrylic ruler to the other end and start her line right at that dot as well. Then she'll just match up those lines with a straight line without the ruler. We want to be sure that these lines that we're drawing past the pattern material are parallel. So the ruler has to be perpendicular to the pattern. It can be done without the clear acrylic ruler, but it's a little bit more difficult. Now Cheryl Lynn will just continue with the half inch seam allowance around the uh, remainder of the pattern material. Remember we only need that four inch sleeve allowance at the bottom edge. When that's done we recommend transferring the matchup uh, dots onto the fabric. So lift up the area where the dots are that you cut around and put all of those dots yeah. onto the fabric material. Cheryl Lynn's going to use that fabric uh, yellow pencil to mark the location of the dart. Uh, so she's marking that and then she'll lift the pattern material up and mark where the dart will stop uh, inside of the uh, fabric. And then she'll use the clear acrylic ruler to make a line from that dot to where the dart's positions are. Makes a little wedge. Don't forget to mark on the fabric where each one of the matchup dots rests. Now we're creating the dart at the bottom edge. This is where the four inch seam allowance or sleeve allowance was made. We'll do this exactly the same as we did previously on that first dart except for that we're going to extend this line in to the cut line that is uh, four inches away from the pattern material. So we're just making a wedge to create that dart. This Surelast material makes an excellent cover material. It's very abrasion resistant and it's UV resistant and water resistant. You can cut it simply with shears or you could use a hot knife. We'll now call our attention to the side panel. The side panel is facing up right now and we've placed it on the bottom side of the fabric. In other words, the fabric is facing with the wrong side up, uh, but the words are readable. So the pattern material is facing up. We're placing a half inch seam allowance along the two ends and also the top of this pattern. The bottom will include the four inch seam allowance. Here you can see Cheryl Lynn using that clear acrylic ruler here to create the half inch seam allowance. And notice as well we're extending the line so that we have uh, a line that goes well within to our four inch seam allowance. And then we'll just simply continue with the half inch seam allowance around the entire perimeter except for where 
the 4 inch uh, sleeve will be installed at the bottom. We'll not show all this. We'll skip forward to the 4 inch sleeve allowance here. As stated previously, all we need to do is just make a line that is uh, exactly parallel to the line on the bottom uh, edge of the side panel. Anywhere where the ruler does not land uh, perpendicular uh, to the line will only draw to that point and stop. Uh, so we've laid the ruler it's along its length here because obviously most of our lines are a little bit straighter along the bottom edge of the side panel. Now following that same procedure, we'll use the match up marked dots that are on the pattern material and transfer those to the fabric at all points. To create the dart for this uh, side panel, the procedure is exactly the same. Transfer the lines that are on the pattern to the fabric. You can lift the fabric uh, or the pattern material up to get better access to the fabric underneath. Just be sure the pattern does not move. We're going to speed up the uh, video here slightly. Hopefully you can still see what's going on, but we don't want to bore you with the procedure. This dart stops short, so we put a dot where we indicated that on the pattern material onto our fabric. Where the 4 inch sleeve allowance was added, you want to extend the dart following the same desired shape or curve so that it's pleasing to the eye. Then join up the lines to create a single dart and cut the material out using scissors. We want to duplicate this panel because we need two of them and you notice the material that we just cut out is being used as a pattern. We've laid it so that it is facing up. The new material underneath this pattern is facing so the wrong side is up. That will create a complete mirrored image. We're using a grease pencil to mark around that pattern that we cut out and then we move it out of the way and place the original pattern material right on top of it. And that way we can mark the uh, matchup dots uh, onto our original fabric. Now the pattern material is facing so that the words are illegible. In other words, it's facing so it's down on top of that. So you had to flip that to do this. And then we'll use that same pattern material to create the dark just as we did previously with the first panel will not show all of this. After we're done with this we'll just cut it out. Alright we're almost done cutting out the fabric from our patterned material. Here's the seat and you notice that the uh, wording is facing down. You can't read it and the uh, actual material is facing so that the wrong side is facing up. We're going to tape that in place and we're going to follow the same procedure. Now with this uh, pattern we do not need to add a 4 inch sleeve because all of the edges will have a half inch seam allowance. We're going to join the other panels to this one. However this one does have a rather particular or irregular dart in it, two of them, so we will skip ahead to that section. Okay, we've padded around our half inch seam allowance and we've added the dots and now we're going to tape a little bit here closer to that first dart. Sherilyn's using that pencil to mark the location of the darts on the fabric. Now she's going to lift the uh, pattern material so that she can create a fairly nice fold and she'll mark the remainder of the dart. We're going to go through this in a little bit of a, a double time so we don't have to uh, bore you with any details. You probably already have this procedure down, but we don't want to skip anything either. We want to be thorough. Now that we're done with that dart, we'll move some tape so it's closer to the next dart that we need to work on so that we can fold that material back and uh, repeat that same procedure for it as well. Uh. 
Then we'll cut out our fabric with scissors as we did previously on all the others. One left to go. The final panel is the back panel. We'll be adding the half inch seam allowance along the sides and the top and the four inch sleeve allowance at the bottom. Because we showed a lot of previous panels and you should have the process down, we're only going to show that the uh, pattern material is laying so that the words are upside down, in other words you can't read them, and the fabric is laying so the wrong side is up. We're going to create our four inch uh, sleeve at the bottom. We'll go around it with a half inch seam allowance. Then we'll add the darts as we did previously and then we'll cut it out. All five panels have been cut out of the fabric now. Now we're ready to work on the darts on each of the panels. You want to join the darts before you join the panels together. Transfer the lines on the darts to the opposite side of the fabric, whether that be the top side or the bottom side. We're transferring the lines to the right side of the fabric. Now we're going to fold that dart in half, and we're going to use straight pins to hold the dart in place so while we take it to the sewing machine and sew it. When I said transfer the lines, I only meant that you should mark the end of the line on the other side of the fabric, not the entire line, just so you can have a reference point. You'll notice here how Sherilyn is matching up those lines so they're directly on top of each other, and then she's going to take a straight pin and position it so that it holds the fabric at that precise placement. On small darts like this, you can uh, stick the pins in the uh, perpendicular to the line, somewhere around perpendicular, it doesn't have to be perfect, but on long darts you'll notice that we actually will stick the pins in so they run along the uh, seam line that we'll be uh, creating, or the stitch line I should call it. Uh, for small darts it's not as crucial. The issue that you have with larger darts is that sometimes by sticking the pins in like this the fabric will not lay as flat. Now we take it to the Alterfeed LSZ sewing machine and we're going to create a straight stitch right along that line and we can remove the pins or leave the pins in place and sew over them. Sherilyn likes to remove pins so she's going to remove this pin even though it's easy to sew through it. Yeah, I think she did sew through that one. All right, And then make sure you reverse at the beginning and the end to lock your stitch in place. We're using a V69 polyester thread. You could use a Tanara thread if you want to use a lifetime guaranteed thread. There are stitches complete. We're going to randomly skip around. We're going to concentrate now on a much longer and kind of a curve shaped dart. We're going to place a pin here uh, where it matches the opposite side of the fabric and notice that the pin is going uh, pretty much a parallel with the uh, stitch line. That's because this is a fairly long dart and sometimes that helps to keep the fabric from shifting on us. We want to lay the fabric as flat as possible to create or to prevent any kind of a pucker or hard spot. So Sherilyn is inserting a pin every few inches and she's inserting the pin so it runs fairly parallel with the stitch line. Notice there's a curve in this dart as well. This is not a straight line. You always want to be looking at the line on the top side and the line on the bottom side to be sure that you're uh, penetrating the fabric in the in right exact right spots so the lines are directly opposite of each other. And continue down the length of the dart. This dart at the opposite end extends past uh, the end of the fabric. At the top it came to a point didn't extend past the edge of the fabric. At the bottom it does. Pretty easy procedure. We're not going to show you every single dart in this PWC cover. We're just going to give you the basic idea and uh, then you would need to do that to all the darts prior to sewing each panel together. We're going to speed up the uh, video here. So again, we don't want to bore you. We want to show you all the details, but yet not bore you. That's our goal, to 
give you all the information we possibly can. You should be able to tell by just looking at the video, but the uh, outside surfaces are facing each other and we're forming the dart on the wrong side of the fabric or the inside of the fabric. Now because Sherilyn was careful to be sure there weren't any wrinkles, you'll notice that when we lay this fabric flat that the ends do not line up. That's quite normal. In some of these darts you will not have obviously ends lining up directly on top of each other. They may be offset slightly. Sherilyn places a pin going perpendicular to the uh, stitch line at the beginning so that she can easily sew over that pin or pull that pin. And then when she gets to the pins that are going parallel to the line, she pulls those from the material. You do not want to sew through those, especially since there's a white cap on the end. <laughs> so be sure to pull those prior to sewing. Oops, here one got stuck a little bit. Can she get it? She did. <laughs> It's very important to reverse at the beginning and the end to lock these stitches in place. So reverse for approximately half inch to an inch. We've cut some scrap material to a rectangle shape and we're placing double sided tape on top of it. We'll be using this as a reinforcing strip for where the shock cord will exit from the cover edge. Remove the double sided tape and then baste this rectangular shape uh, so that there's a fold directly down the middle. The tape will measure four inches in width and then about two inches when it's folded in half. The length of it is not that important. Here we have about a seven inch length. Then we're going to place double sided tape on top of it again. We're going to baste this down on the front or forward panel and we're going to baste it right along uh, basically close to the center line. Uh, it's going to be offset slightly uh, but uh, right along that edge and uh, this is where we're going to have the shock cord exit. There are no hard fast rules of where the shock cord exits on your cover but we've decided to place it here. And now we'll take it to the Alterfeed LSZ-1 sewing machine and sew around the perimeter securing that uh, reinforcing patch in place. We used our yellow marking pencil for fabric and drew a rectangle where we want that shock cord to exit. And we did make that a little bit too close to the uh, edge of the fabric. We probably should have had a little bit uh, further in. Uh, I would move it approximately a quarter inch in. But we're going to sew around that uh, rectangle uh, using a straight stitch all around to reinforce it. Then we're going to use the Engel hot knife to create a slit in the center of it. This will seal the edges and will make a perfect spot for the shock cord to exit from the sleeve. If you don't have the Engel hot knife, you could use a word burning tool or a soldering gun. It may not be pretty, but that isn't our goal. This will actually be hidden because it'll be tucked under the gunnel. All right, good news. We now can uh, baste and then sew these panels together. We're using the basting tape, part number 129 for canvas, which sticks very well to the Sherlast material. This is a 3 8 inch uh, seam stick or basting tape, and we're applying it where we need to baste each panel together. We applied the double-sided tape to the front panel, and we're basting the uh, seat panel to it. The seat panel is facing, so the wrong side is facing you, facing the camera. And the outside surfaces of both panels are facing each other. So be sure that you base them together appropriately so that the right sides are facing each other. You'll also notice that this is not just a straight line all the way across. Wherever it transitions, you may have to leave a little bit of a wrinkle. Now she's going to use the magnetic uh, guide 
and position it a half inch away from the needle and then she's going to sew a straight stitch approximately five to six millimeters in length uh, to join those panels together. We're going to create a semi-flat failed seam. That means you'll have uh, a f the first stitch that will sew the panels together, then you'll have a second stitch on the top. Be sure to reverse the beginning and the end. Now here we've folded the panels so the uh, right sides are facing up and we're sewing our top stitch, uh, being sure that we are stitching that fold on the bottom side. You'll notice that Cheryl Lynn is pulling the fabric apart so that uh, she can uh, keep the stitch in the right spot and the stitch is approximately an eighth inch away from that fold. And here we are at the end. No need to reverse because you'll have other panels that will come up against that which will help to uh, keep the stitches from unraveling. Here it is on the bottom side and there's that fold we were discussing. And there's two of the panels stitched together. We're using basting tape again on the seat panel and now we'll join the back panel to the seat panel. And you'll notice that the fabrics do not actually line up on the ends. That's quite normal. Uh, so you want to be sure that your dots are almost directly on top of each other. If you've done it precisely right, the dots will always be on top of each other. They don't have to be perfect, though. Um, your, your aim is to make them perfect, but uh, you'll find out in the end that if they are a little bit off, no problem. So there we created our first stitch, and now we're going to pull the panel apart so the uh, out actual outside surfaces are up, and we're going to create the top stitch to complete the semi flat failed seam here as well. All right, the back panel and the front panel are joined to the seat panel. Now all we have left are the sides. We'll be applying our double-sided tape to the forward panel, as shown here, to the seat panel and to the back panel. Then we're going to join our side panels to those. Where the fabric takes a sharp turn, you can crinkle up the uh, seam stick a little bit and just uh, push it down and leave the wrinkles in place. It won't cause any problems. Here we are going past uh, some of the darts on the seat panel and we'll continue to apply the basting tape going right over those darts making sure they lay flat. Transferring the dots to the other side of the fabric is optional. If you choose to do that, which can be helpful, use a straight pin, punch through, and then mark it. Uh, because you want to follow the dots, not necessarily the edges of the fabric. Here we're going to peel off the transfer tape, revealing the glue, and we're going to base that side panel. Notice that the right sides are facing each other, and also notice that the ends are not flush. We are matching up dot to dot. That's right on it. Now simply base the panels together being sure that you're uh, not stretching one more than the other. And then when you get to a, a sudden change in angle, you may have to leave a little bit of a wrinkle there. We're peeling up the transfer paper as we baste. Pretty simple process. The edges should be as flush as possible. Now, if you're basting and you notice that a dot is not lining up or is a half inch off or an inch off, you can actually little, stretch a, one panel more than the opposite. Uh, so if you find that to be the case, you may want to go back about three feet, unbaste it, and then when you're basting, pull one panel more than the other. Here there's a fairly gradual sh sharp turn here and notice that the fabric is not completely resting flat at that sharp turn. It's got a little bit of a wrinkle in it. That's quite normal. All right, here's another sharp transition as we transition onto the, uh, uh, I think this is the back panel. Yeah, back panel, correct. Okay. 
And here we are at the end. Not flush, but the points, or the dots, are almost directly on top of each other. That's one side. You would do that same procedure to the other side, but first we're going to sew it. We'll create our first stitch, a half inch from the edge of the fabric, and we're using that uh, deluxe magnetic uh, guide to keep our stitch in a consistent uh, spacing. And we're not going to show this entire process here. Uh, and then we'll create our top stitch. Here we are at a turn. I want to show a little bit about that. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll bury our needle and make a turn, but uh, Cheryl Lynn's going to just uh, slowly pivot the material around as she sews and uh, that completes a turn. There's a little bit of a wrinkle there, but that will not be a big deal at all. The slower you go, and if you want to bury your needle, lift your foot and pivot on the needle, that's a good idea as well. Here we're coming up to a dart. Obviously, we just want to sew that dart down. And here's the other end. We do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Now all we have to do is our top stitch. Next step. We have removed the deluxe magnetic guide, and now we're creating the top stitch on this semi-flat filled seam. Here's another rather sharp turn. Watch what Sherilyn does. Buries the needle, lifts her foot, pivots on the needle, rotates the fabric, lowers her foot, and then continues to sew. These covers are not very large and they easily fit through a home sewing machine uh, underarm space. Uh, you can sew these with a home sewing machine as well as a Sayrite Ultrafeed LS1 or an LSZ1 as shown here. Now at the ends they will not match up perfectly so we'll just trim them so that the, the transition is smooth between each end. We've skipped ahead quite a bit here. We did not show basting and sewing the other side of the panel, but we've already done that. And here we are just trimming the excess fabric that uh, extends past each one of those uh, seams that we created. It's always a good idea to go to the project and fit the cover on to be sure that you have enough sleeve allowance around the edge of your cover to create the shock cord sleeve. So check that all around the perimeter of the edge. Uh, if you have too much, then you may make adjustments. If you have too little, then you don't have to continue to do your labor and be disappointed in the end. Ours fits perfectly. We're going to add some reinforcing patches for areas where chafe may happen. We recommend this highly. Prior to installing the sleeve for the shock cord, we're going to create some patches at the handlebars and at the mirrors made from the shelter right vinyl material. We've used some round circles to create the pattern and now we're going to apply the basting tape that we used previously on those circles so that we can baste it in place prior to sewing. This is the inside of the cover and this is the location for the mirror, so we're going to peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue and we're going to place this uh, shelter right material so that the mirror or the dot for the mirror is directly in the center of this patch. We're going to baste it in place so the fabric is as flat as possible and then we'll take it to the Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine and sew a straight stitch all around the perimeter of that circle or the circumference of the circle I should say. We'll be showing this in uh, a fast forward motion here. We're going to start our stitch on top of that uh, semi flat failed seam there, and we'll do some reversing at the end. You'll notice that anytime she has a sharp turn, she'll bury her needle, lift her foot, pivot on the needle, lower the foot, and continue to sew. So she, typically she can move the fabric around by hand, but if she gets a little bit off, she'll follow that procedure.
All right, there's one patch installed. We want to do this at any location where there may be an abrasion issue. Uh, we're going to do it only at the handlebars and at the mirrors. So here's the position at the handlebars. We're not going to show installing this. You basically have the idea already. We've cut a length of shock cord that is longer than the entire perimeter of the cover and we've inserted it into that hole that we made previously and we'll tie a knot off. So now we'll create a fold that's approximately one and a half inches up from that edge and then we're just going to sew a straight stitch uh, all around the perimeter uh, tucking in that shock cord as we sew. It can be difficult to feed a small line through the sleeve once it's done to pull shock cord through so we really recommend that you feed the shock cord or place the shock cord in the sleeve as you sew. It's not important to make sure that it's exactly one and a half inches but try to keep it consistent if you can. Anywhere there's a sharp turn you'll need to uh, cause the fabric to create darts of its own as it's sewing so that's quite normal. Don't worry about its appearance much because this will be the inside of the cover. We apologize about the noise in the background. It's business as usual at Sailrite. Anytime you come to darts, just simply sew those in. Here's a dart that uh, is obviously folded into that sleeve. No problem. And continue sewing all around the perimeter. When you get to the other end, before you get there all the way, make sure you feed the shock cord in through the slit. Otherwise, you'll have to rip up the stitch and uh, re-sew it down. All right, when you get to the uh, where you started the stitch, just do some reversing. The PWC cover, personal watercraft cover, is now complete. Again, this applies to any irregular shaped object that you want to cover. Let's see how it fits. Once it's been placed over the jet ski, all we need to do is go up to the shock cord and start pulling the shock cord until it's a snug fit all around the gunnel. Once we've pulled out enough shock cord to make it snug, then we have a second helper helped while we tie a figure eight knot to keep it in place. And our PWC cover looks great and is rather form fitting, exactly the way we designed it. With the reinforcement patches at the handlebar and the reinforcement patches at the mirror. There will be no abrading happening there with the use of that shelter right material on the underside. Let's show how easy it is to remove the cover. No need to release the shock cord, we'll leave it tension just the same. All you need to do is just lift the edges and take off the cover. To reinstall the cover, no need to adjust the shock cord, just simply slip it over the gunnel of the jet ski. Using this video, we hope you feel confident that you can pattern almost any irregular shaped object like this jet ski or PWC. With the help of Sailrite's videos and also the supplies that you can purchase from Sailrite, we hope to train you to do just about any job with canvas or cloth. I'm Eric Grant with Sailrite. Thanks for watching this video. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your support.